Good morning. Here are your announcements. Walk with Christ and be baptized. Sign up on a connection card or at thewayberkeley.com slash connect. Be prepared to attend the baptism class, which happens on the day you're baptized. We commit to helping you grow as a Christian. Sign up for the available live groups at thewayberkeley.com slash grow. Get a free session with a licensed clinician by signing up at thewayberkeley.com. Join us here at The Way for Lament, a series of pauses. This pause explores what it looks like for an Asian American woman to lament a story not her own, but that of a black man's, and for a black man to lament hers. It seemed as if the audience were eavesdropping on a vulnerable moment. The performance and four-week teaching series is grounded in the context of friendship, oriented toward faith in God, and explores hard-to-voice questions about racial injustice through original music, spoken words, spirituals, folk song, and prayer. The program runs on Wednesday evenings now through October 4th. Join your friends who have expanded their service to our community. You can serve for a term on one of our ministry teams. Sign up at thewayberkeley.com slash grow in order to serve. If you're affected by prostate cancer or know someone who is, learn about the latest advances in diagnosis and treatment at the symposium on Wednesday, September 27th at Samuel Merritt University Health Education Center. Take a multicultural wellness walk. Join the Ethnic Health Institute of Samuel Merritt University and the East Bay Regional Parks to walk along the hidden Redwood Forest off Redwood Road just a few miles over the ridge from downtown Oakland. The intention is for the walk to serve as motivation to continue the promotion of cardiovascular health, physical activity, and overall wellness throughout the year. Tonight, join us for a pop-up concert with recording artist and the youngest McBride, Shelly Blair. Come for the extended worship at 6 p.m. You can access these updates and more at thewayberkeley.com. Enjoy your week. All right. So you have to be here at 6 o'clock tonight. Shelly, that's beautiful. And there's more of that. Maybe she'll, like, play every instrument she knows because she's, like, a violin virtuoso and also an organ player. And maybe she'll hop on the drums. You don't know what's going to happen. Got to come and find out. Thank you, Shelly. It was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. How many are ready for the word of God on today? Yes, I'm glad that you guys are excited. It's also the first day of the NFL. I see a few of my Niner fans here representing. I'm not going to mention the other team. Maybe our Raiders in here, perhaps. Ushers. No, just kidding. Yes, so I want you to just as excited we would be for our favorite team. That's how excited we should be about the word of God, right? Because when hard times come, the Niners have yet to send me a check. I need the Lord. So if you do need a Bible at this time, um, we have Bibles available from our wonderful greeters. Aren't they wonderful? Farida, Sister Lovisa. They're amazing. We got you got a Bible. Um, we've been talking on a series about bridging the gap. And today is a, is a sermon kind of about bridging uh, the gap between now and the future. I feel like this is a, is a very weighty word. Um, it's a word that um, has a eternal significance. And I, I'm really excited to bring it. So I want you guys to be on one accord with me. I want y'all paying attention. If your neighbor starts dozing off, Give them the good sanctified elbow. All right? All right, all right. We're just going to jump into it. So, God, we, um, let's just pray over this word. God, we thank you. Thank you for bringing us here. God, we love you. We worship you. There is power in your word. Your word brings life. It's a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path. So, God, I pray that your word will be communicated clearly. God, I pray that it will have an eternal and lasting impact into our souls. Do something special in here, God. We are ready to receive your word. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Okay, so I I just have a question before we start. Um, Does anybody have um, a friend who is super random? Anyone have super random friends that just say random things? or do random stuff 
at awkward times. Maybe that friend is here and you need to like do the, yeah, the, or it's you, you're self-appointed. How many are you a self, self-confessed random person? Yes, my, my brothers and sisters. I, I too can also be a little random at times. Even as now, as I'm preaching this, this sermon, I could have random thoughts. Like, is an argument between two vegans still called a beef? Hmm. I just watch What the Health, anybody? I'm now a part-time vegetarian. I'm gonna live on the weekends, I don't care. During the week, I ain't gonna mess with it. There's other random thoughts I've had at times. Before Boaz was married, was he ruthless? Questions I have. Here's another one. And another one. If time is money, does that mean an ATM is a time machine? <laughs> Things that make you go, hmm. hmm. I had way too much fun looking for these, I must say. Spent half the time preparing the sermon looking for random thoughts. I was going to give you like 20 of them, but I felt like I should cut back. Okay, last one. If you try to fail and succeed, which have you done? <laughs> Think about it. And let's just sit with that one. Well, well, while we're on the subject of failing and succeeding and your mind has now been blown, all of us tend to have random tendencies, right? We could be random at times. Um, if you were to look up the definition of random, it would say having no specific pattern, purpose, a definite aim, a reason, or an objective. Just random. Things that just have no rhyme or reason. And if we're not careful, we can end up living a random life, and you'll look up and you'll have nothing to show for it. Um, I don't know if anybody are older like me, I'm in their 40s, any 40s. You know, it's easy for you to look up and like half your life is gone, and you're like, wait, what happened? How many people have, like, you just thought you just graduated from high school? You could have swore it was literally two years ago, and you're on your way to your 10-year reunion. Like, what? How did that happen? Life is like that. Life really goes fine. If you had a, a, a child, you could have swore they were just in diapers. Now they're in high school. They're graduating. Life goes by fast. And if you're not careful... And if you're not thoughtful, and if you're not intentional, you can end up living a very random life with no rhyme, no reason, and you'll look up and you'll have nothing to show for your life. But how many people want to live on purpose? How many want to live a life of purpose? I got any purpose people in this house? So this, this message is about a, a term called backwards planning. Do I have any educators in the house? Come on, sister. Come on, any educators? You guys, if you're an educator, you know about backwards planning, right? So in theory, for all the rest of us, um, if you want to teach a child algebra, per se, sister Malaysia, you start off with what you want them to know, and then you work backwards. So that at the end of the class, uh, at the end of your year, you know these babies know these things, and you have a, a way to get them there, right? So you're not randomly teaching them things and hoping that you end up with an with a end result. Backward planning. You know, these are things that I don't know. I have my high school kids in here. Hi, kids. I have some seniors in here, people who are in high school and junior. You don't just maybe show up to school and then hope you graduate. By time, you know, you have that graduation in mind. You can see yourself walking across there with a robe 
and then you plan your life. But I'm going to need to go to class. I'm going to need to show up <laughs> so I can get this end result. Amen? So I'm wondering if we could use the same principle and apply it to our spiritual life. What if we, and you could go to the next slide, what if we begin with the end in mind? What if it's just not something that we apply in classrooms or when we go to college or when we're raising a family? You know, when you're raising a family, you're like, I want my child to know by the time they're 18, I want these things to be in them. But what if we applied this to our spiritual life? Today I want to talk about backwards planning your spiritual life by beginning with the end in mind. All right, y'all with me? All right. We're going to start with it. We have a couple of scriptures. What is the end? What are we talking about? I have a couple of scriptures I want to share with you. Um, the first one is 2 Corinthians 5.10. It says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Then we also have Romans 14, 12. So then each of us will give an account of himself to God. Now, it's going to get quiet in here because I want y'all to sit in here. I want you guys to know it's okay if I don't hear a lot of amens. I'm already okay with this because this we, we thought we going to get deep, Okay. I want you to sit with this for a little bit. Sit with the thought that one day you will stand before God. There will be no one else there but you. Your pastor won't be there. Your grandma that prayed for you all your life. Your mom, your auntie, your youth pastor. Um, no one else will be there. Just you and God. I want you to sit with that for a meeting, for, for a moment. And as of today, right now, what would that meeting look like? Would you think about it? Would you sit with this? Now, before too many people panic, because people start going down, thinking down all kind of trails and roads, Pump your brakes. Hold up. If you, are believe, if you are a believer, if you believe in Jesus, if you've asked God into your life, if you are a Christian, I want you to know when you stand before God that your salvation will not be at question. Your salvation will not be questioned. If you believe in God, if you believe in Jesus, you've asked him into your heart, you've confessed him, you know that you're a Christian, if you've done that, all your sins have already been forgiven. So when you stand before God, it's not like, am I going to heaven? Am I going to hell? What are we doing here, God? Like, you, you, if you're a Christian, you're good. But this meeting is going to be about purpose. This meeting, when you stand before God, it's going to be about purpose, not about your salvation. It's about your purpose. Now, if you have not received Jesus into your life and he is, you're not a Christian, you're still on the fence, you might want to take care of that. Because then your, your meeting will be about where you will spend your eternity. But right now, I'm just talking to the Christians. This meeting will be about purpose. I want you to think about this meeting as though you have gotten a company credit card. Anybody got a company credit card before? You ever got that? You're, company was like, here, take this, and, you know, we're having a party, we're having a big event, I want you to take this and get everything we need for this event. You're like, cool, got it, yes, on my way. Then, you know, you're, after the event is over, what have you, your boss comes to you, you're like, let's go over your expense report, right? So, if you're supposed to be getting party things, and on your expense report, there's all kind of H&M, Red Lobster, you've been to Macy's a couple of times, Yogurt Land, been to Starbucks and got a Vente, you was just living. <laughs> right? You, 
At that time, you will have to give an account of everything you spent and things that you were supposed to get that you did not get. So I want you to think about your meeting with God as an expense report of your life. Come on. Think about it. God's given you something. He's given you life. He's given you a purpose. And he's going to require a rundown of that purpose. I want to I want you to I want to refresh your memory. We're not going to read the whole thing, but in Matthew 25, remember the parable of the talents? Right? About the um you know, it was, it was a story about investment. Do I have any, any um, finance majors in here? Anybody want to be an accountant? Any of these people? Oh, no, we're all not good with money. Okay. <laughs> kind of. I got a math, math person. There it is. Yeah, so, I mean, anyone ever invested, got a loan from somewhere? Student loan, still paying, Lord Jesus. <laughs> nah, that's a whole nother stuff. See, I done got your mind right. Come back. Come on back. Don't think about those right now. That story in Matthew 25 is a story about an investing. And in your own time, please read Matthew 25. But remembering that, he gave one, he gave them different talents. Talents equal money. To one, he gave 5,000 talents. To another, uh, $5,000. To another, he gave $2,000. To another, he gave $1,000. Depending on their ability. So God has given you something according to the ability that you have. Just because someone has more capacity for more doesn't make your little one, doesn't mean that you're not, you know, you're inferior to them. Just like you're really good at what God's given you, right? He wants you to focus on one thing. A lot of people can do multiple things, but some people just need to be focused on one thing, and that one thing could reap a, a great harvest, right? And then, you know, at the end of the story, the boss comes back. He likes, so, you know, let's go over this expense report, what you do with the money. Two of them double it. The one who had 5000 the one who had 2000 they doubled the money. And the master was like, cool, good job, way to go. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into my joy. I gave you something. You went out, you invested it, and you doubled it. But then it was that one shady guy, remember? He only had one talent. And the boss was like, so he's like, I, oh, I got you your one talent back. Here you go. He's like, so... What, you didn't you just you didn't do anything with it? He's like, no, I you know I knew you was you know hard and you mean sometimes, and um, so I just you know I was scared. I just hid it, and then I, I here here's your one back. And, and the boss had a problem with that person because he was supposed to take what God gave him and invest it and doubled it into their lives. So God is looking for a return on your life. God's looking for a return on your life. And one day, God sent me here to let you know you're going to stand before him, and he's going to want an account of your life. What did you do with what I gave you? What you do with it? Did you hide it? Did you be like, well, I'm shy? You know, are we going to stand before God with a bunch of excuses? See, I would have, but see, what had happened was, see, um, Lonnie and them. What, what would, what are you going to do with what he gave you? Think about what, what God has put into your life. Think about the purpose that you know. Think about <coughs> dreams and visions he's given you. Think about the people he's put into your life for you to love. What are you, what are you doing with it? So, you know, don't worry. Let's, we're, we're bringing back. I got good news for you. We got, we got meeting options, all right? We, let's go over some meeting options. So I'm, I'm trying to get y'all ready for this day. So when you back, I'm going to be back there like, hey, you remember that sermon? I'm going to be in the back like, you good, yeah? You remember that sermon? Let's get it. You remember? So I'm like, like way back there, like, you got this. 
Sorry, that was not in my notes. I'm sorry. <laughs> what are our meeting options? I want to go to 1 John 2.28. We got, meet, we got options on how this meeting going to go. Can go. John 2.28. It says, and now little children abide in him so that when he appears, we may have what? And not shrink from him in shame at his coming. So we got options. So we, we're all going to stand before God. Everybody knows that. 100% of all of us in here are going to die. We don't like to think about it. We don't like to talk about it. But it's true. We, we are all going. This is a fact. This is true news. This is not fake news. You will all stand before God individually. And you have an opportunity right now to plan for that, how that meeting is going to go. Will you be ashamed or will you be confident before him? You have a choice right now. So as of today, forget about yesterday. We all got stuff back there that we don't want to bring up. We were like, Jesus, you sure that's, that's all covered, right? We ain't talking about that stuff. Jesus already forget. So a lot of us went in different trails. I'm like, but what about in 19... 19- 95, that was a bad summer. Well, some of you guys have already went there. I'm talking about as of today. Your past is done. It's covered under the blood of Jesus. Now, as of today, what can you do right now to make the meeting that you will have with God one day, to make it where you are confident before him? And not ashamed. See, this doesn't have to be a sad day. That's why I don't want you all to feel heavy about this message. It doesn't have to be a sad sad day. If you plan right now to make this a great day filled with joy and excitement. Imagine you're standing before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And there's no hiding anything. You, You can't hide. You can't hide behind excuses. You know, it's all said and done. It's a wrap. Here's your. Wouldn't you want that day to be amazing? Think about it. Wouldn't you? you, This is bigger than any final exam, any bar test, any GRE, anything. You the big, a big something is bigger than that. What if you were able to stand before God confident? As opposed to, oh, man, 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 I know I should have. Oh, I could have did so much more. Oh, can you imagine standing before the king of kings? Lord, ashamed. I really want us to think about this. It says, do not, we can be confident so we won't shrink back from him in shame. Kind of like how Adam and Eve did. Remember in the garden? Adam, where are you? Where are they at? Hiding. Shamed. In the presence of God. I don't know about y'all. I do not want that to be my story. Anybody else? I want to be able to stand before God confident. And this is how we're going to do it. Y'all ready? There's no big secrets. There's not a lot of formulas. There's not like a five-step program. I won't charge you for a seminar. This is all for free. There's only one thing you need to do, and it's already in this verse. One thing. Everybody say one thing. We just sung. One thing. Hey. One thing. Wait, wait, wait. Go back. Go back. Go back. Yes. There's only one thing. Abide in him. Abide in him. See, I love God. He's not complicated. If that was my program, it would be all kind of stuff. You need to go do some backflips. You need to go ahead and do a few laps. I need you to go jump through a few hoops. I need to see if you're really worthy of this. But look how awesome God is. The only thing you need to stand confident before God in the end is to simply abide in him. And what does that mean? We're ready for the next one. Abide. 
the definition of abide is just to just remain, to continue, just stay, just dwell with him, just reside, just continue to be in a particular condition, just to continue to have an attitude or relationship with him, just, just to last. A lot of your Christianity is just lasting the storms, just getting through, just going through perseverance, just like, I don't know, things are crazy, but I, I'm, I'm still here, God. Friends come and go. Things come and go. You might even start it off if you grew up in church. A lot of where are the people you grew up in church at with? Like, so y'all don't believe in this no more, you know? Just lasting. It's simple. Just to abide. Now, the phrase abiding in Christ pictures an intimate, close relationship. Not just having a superficial acquaintance. You see the difference? Not just saying a prayer like, oh, yeah, I know God, I'm a Christian. Abiding is a whole nother level that's available to all, and it's not hard. It's not hard to do. It's, a, it's just a closed relationship that's not superficial. We've all had superficial acquaintances. That's about 75% of your friends on Instagram or Facebook. Superficial acquaintances. You, they, they don't even count as friends. But as you grow older in life, you find out that you just need a few, a few faithful few friends. You only need just a few friends to have a deep, intimate relationship with. Um, it's a state of intimacy with Jesus that we must strive to obtain post-salvation. Now, I want you to get this. Post-salvation. A lot of us, we get saved, yes, said the prayer, good, covered, fire insurance, check, I'm good, following Jesus. And it just kind of, that's, that's all. You just profess to be a Christian. That's kind of the extent of your Christianity. But I'm talking about another level to attain to after you become a Christian. A post-Christian experience. Like really diving into a deep relationship with him. Just as though when you met your significant other, you know, y'all started off as friends. Like, oh, I holler, you okay. On the phone. Then it turns into a few dates. Eventually it leads, you know, it keeps leading into a, a more intimate connection until you're you're married and, you know, you're experiencing a relationship. It's the same. Why do we get that in human relationships, but we don't necessarily get that with our spiritual relationship? Like, once you meet Jesus, and you, you, you got to keep walking that thing out. You got to keep getting closer to him. It's a relationship. So you all know everyone who's um, had roommates before. Or you live with some. You never really know someone until you live with them, right? <laughs> Found that to be true. Um, if you could throw on John 15, this is the, the, the most popular verses about abiding in Jesus. This is from the message version, and we're just about finished. Jesus said, live in me. This is what he's asking of us. Live in me. Make your home in me. Just as I do in you, in the same way that a branch can't bear grapes by itself, but only by being joined to the vine. You can't bear fruit unless you are joined with me. He said, I am the vine, you are the branches. When you are joined with me and I with you, the re relation intimate and organic, the harvest is sure to be abundant, separated, you can't produce a thing. We don't want to stand before God having a life that did not produce a thing. How sad. How sad would that be to stand before God and you, you absolutely have nothing to show? I gave you so much. I gave you gifts. I gave you talents. I gave you help. You, you, you didn't do anything with that? Right? 
So live with him. Just like when you get to know that person, when you live with them, you get to learn their dislikes, their likes. You know, like, oh, Lord, they don't like the soap over there. They're going to always squeeze the toothpaste wrong, so I'm going to put it, I'm going to hide it. Like, you know, you get to know people. Same with Christ. How do you find out what pleases Jesus? You got to live with him. You got to live with him. How do you find out what he likes in your life? And does he approve of the things that you're, that, that's going on in your life? How do you even know? Well, when you live with somebody, it's hard to hide things. Right? It's hard to hide things when you, you can do your best, but it's a close quarters. Especially if you live in a, like a studio or something. Live in a studio, try to hide something. Everybody doing this tiny home nations. <laughs> try to hide stuff in tiny homes. Right? Everything you need to live this life is found in abiding in Christ. You're looking for your purpose? Abide in Christ. What, what job should you choose? Abide. Career? Hey, I got an answer for you. Abide. Decisions? Abide. That's all you need to do. See, it's hard to hear important things from far away. If I'm in a crowd and I'm trying to tell you, hey, you left your keys and your wallet. It's located by the microwave. I'm trying to tell you way, you got a whole crowd of people and I'm just, you're like, what? What'd you say? My, wild, my popcorn by the microwave. You know, you can't hear things from a distance. We treat Jesus like, Jesus, what you say? What I'm supposed to do? And we're far from him. But if you want to hear, have a close. Get close to him. Get close to him. Everything you need, every answer comes from abiding with him, being close with him, being intimate with him, being so close that all he has to do is whisper. Go this way. No, leave that alone. No, she right. No, he wrong. All he has to do is just whisper into your spirit. Uh, abide comes from, uh, the, it was very interesting to see the meaning of the origin of abide. And it comes from like an old English meaning. To, it means to wait onward. To wait onward. So we're waiting. We're going to abide in him. But it's going to get us somewhere. It's going to get us onward to that day when we stand before him. This is our last verse. It's 2 Timothy 4, 6 through 8. These are goals. Put this under goals. Foul this in your mind under goals, right? This is Paul talking. This is at the end of Paul's life. He said... For I am already being poured out as a drink offering at the time and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. Not only me but also to all who have loved his appearing. I love this verse. Let this be your testimony. Paul got to the end of his life, and he's like, I, I did all I can. I fought the fight. I ran the race. I poured out everything. He said, I've been poured out by the end of your life. All your purpose should be totally used up. You poured it all out. You used it all. You given it all out. You gave your best. And now you're ready to see the judge. You're ready to stand before him. But this is the part I love the most. Those who love his appearing. Will you love his appearing? Will you be in such anticipation where I can't wait? Oh, yeah, you could come anytime because I'm, I'm ready. As opposed to, oh, Jesus, don't come tonight. Do not 
Do not come tonight. Do not. I'm going out. Not tonight, Lord. See, Jesus is, he's coming back soon. He is coming back. Everybody know that Jesus is coming back soon? The catch to that is he could come back for any of us at any time individually. He is coming. We just don't know when he's coming for us. But how awesome would it be to backwards plan your life to the fact that I'm, I'm living for this day. Every decision I make will equal to this day. Everything I do, I want to be able to stand before God and be able to give an account for that. Just like your business card. Be like, what you, you spent this? Oh, yeah, I spent that because we needed to get a couple of things for the, oh, okay, you got an explanation for that. What if we lived our lives like that? What if we stop being so random and just live, hey, whatever comes, what it comes, whatever happens, happens, hey, YOLO. What if we stop living YOLO and start living with purpose and live for this day? Because this day is coming. What if we, what if we every decision we made, you could have this in the back of your mind. Oh, yeah, and I'll be able to, I'll be able to talk to God about this. He could ask me about this. It would be no problem. He, he could have anything in my life. It'll be, he could ask, my life's an open book. A lot of us have not lived in that freedom to be an open book yet. God wants you to be able to be an open book. Nothing hidden, no skeletons, nothing to hide. You can check my phone. I don't care. Go through it. Look through all my pictures. Nothing, right? <laughs> Check my DMs. Uh oh. <laughs> Let me keep going. <laughs> so uh, there's there's sort of a plot twist to this to this sermon. A lot of us heard the sermon like, great, I'm on it. We're very list oriented. It's on. I'm starting a nonprofit. I'm walking old ladies across the street. I'm going to help Boy Scouts. I'm recycling. I'm going to watch What the Health. I'm going to do this. I mean, a lot of us have been like, yes, things for God. Check. I'm ready. Because when I stand before God, I'm going to be like, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, Jesus, right? But there's a plot twist to this sermon. God's not looking for a laundry list of good deeds for me. That's what he doesn't want. Cool if your life produces that. That's cool. I want to share with you a quick verse. I didn't put it up here because I'm just going to read it to you. It's Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Well, blow your socks off. Jesus said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven, on that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, cast out demons in your name, and do mighty works in your name? And I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Whew. Sit with that. God's not interested in doing things in his name. These people came like, yeah, Jesus, we did heck of stuff for you. We did this. We do that. We was casting out demons. We was preaching. We was doing, ooh, we started all these programs for you. And at the end of the day, Jesus was like, oh, okay, that's cool. I don't know you. Who are you? I don't see your name here. See, what God wants from you he wants you. He wants you. He doesn't want stuff. He doesn't want things you could produce. At the end of the day, when he stands, when you stand before God, he's going to want to know, did I have you? Did I have all of you? Did you give me everything? Did you let me be the Lord of your life? which means that he's the boss. He tells you what to do. 
A lot of us don't want nobody to tell us nothing. Don't tell me nothing. <laughs> Somebody tell you something to do at work, you be like, who, boo? <laughs> she don't know. I know what to do. We don't want nobody to tell us anything. And we can't do that in a Christian life. When you come to Jesus, y'all know what this is, right? Y'all know what this is. A, isn't a, when you come to Jesus, you give him your life. You give him full control of your life. You're saying, God, I want you to make the decisions from now on. Whatever you want, that's what I want. I'm going to do whatever you want me to do. Somehow we, we just like, I just wanted the life insurance part. I didn't want all that. You're going to tell me to do stuff. At the end of the day, when you stand before God, he's going to want to know, did he have your heart? Did you let him be Lord of your life? Did you give him all? Did you worship him with everything that's in you? Did you hold back? Did you hold back to do things that he didn't approve of? Did you give him everything? And how beautiful it would be to stand before God and be like, like Paul said, I, I poured it all out, God. I gave you everything. I gave you my heart, my mind, my soul. I worshiped you. I didn't do everything perfect, God. I didn't do everything. I know I messed up here and there, and I did that. But, Lord, I just wanted you. I just wanted you. That's all I wanted. I wanted you to be Lord of my life. I wanted you to reign with in, in me. It's what I live for. I live to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into my joy. See, that's a happy day. It's like, hey, you're here. Yes, come on in. I've been waiting for you. That's what happens when you give him everything. God sent me here today to, to encourage you to think about that day. That day should always be in the back of your mind somewhere. That day will keep you from doing crazy stuff. That day will keep you out of a lot of trouble because you're like, and not that you're going to heaven or hell. That's not the issue. The issue is that you're going to stand before him and give an account. And you want it to be a good report. You want him to be well pleased with your life. And that comes from his grace. There's nothing we can do. We can't do it on our own. But all he wants is a willing heart. That's all he wants is a willing heart. So let's just take a moment just to, that was a lot. If you could just take a moment just to bow your head. Just close your eyes where you are. Maybe just take a deep breath. Just sit with this. Try to imagine yourself standing before God. Imagine what you want that day to be like. Because you have the power right now to fashion what that day will look like. As of today, going forward, you can make that the most joyous, wonderful event ever. Or it could be the most embarrassing time that you've ever faced. What in your life is keeping you from loving his appearing? What is that thing that makes you be like, ooh, Jesus, please don't come. I got to get some stuff straight first. That's the thing God is after today. What in your life will cause you to be ashamed before him? God wants that today. Is a few temporary pleasures 
worth being able to stand before God and not be able to give a good report of what the time and talents and the resource that he gave you. If you're with me, if you're just like me, and you want to live for this day, I'm going to invite you to stand. If you're saying, man, I, I, I want to live for this day. I want, to, when I stand before God, to be amazing. I want it to be filled with joy. I want to be able to give a good report and say, yes, sir. I did all I could for you. I gave it all. And all I, all I gave you was my heart. I didn't have much. I just gave you my heart. I just gave you my will. I just gave you whatever I had, God, was yours. And that's all he's asking for me. So if that's you and you're standing with me, I'm just going to pray over us. God, first of all, we just want to say that we repent. God, we're sorry for all the things that have held us back from loving your appearance, from standing. We're sorry for all the wasted time, God. We're sorry. We're sorry for not taking care of the purpose and the plans that you have for us, God. Will you forgive us? We want to do better, God. If you're here and you want to do better, come on, lift your hands as a sign that you're saying, God, I repent and I want to rededicate. I want to rededicate it to you, God. From this point on, I want to be able to fashion this meeting. I am living for the moment when I see you face to face and I want you to say, well done. God, I want that. And I'm going to live for that. And give me the grace to do it. Give me the help, God. I can't do it on my own. I mess up from time to time. And every time you mess up from this time on, just ask him to forgive you. Cover it under the blood. God, I messed up. And he'll be like, that's all right. I got you. That's why I died. Now I want you to get up and I want you to try again. Just give me your, give me your heart. Give it to me again. Keep doing it. Yes, God. If you have your hands, or if you can continue to worship God, talk to him for yourself. I'm going to be quiet for a minute. I want you to talk to God for yourself. Pray a prayer to him. Tell him how you feel right now. I surrender all to you. Talk to God for yourself. Tell him. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Say, I surrender all. I surrender all to you. Tell him everything I give. Everything I give. Say withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing. Say, Lord, I'm withholding nothing from you. Oh, withholding nothing. Come on, one more time. Say, I surrender all. I surrender all to you. Say, everything I give. Come on, one more time. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender it all to you, Lord. Come on, it belongs to you, God. Everything I give to you. Say withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Oh, withholding nothing. Come on, withholding nothing. 
withholding nothing. So at this time, we uh, I want to deal with the other group of people who might be in the room. This might be your first time hearing a clear gospel presentation, and you might be sitting here thinking, you know what, I have never formally given my life to God. I'm not sure about that day because I'm not even, I don't even remember, I mean, I go to church, I mean, my mom took me, I mean, I don't remember really asking God into my life. If that's you, I'm going to ask you to do something very bold. I'm asking you to respond to this message by coming down to the altar to give your life to God. And a lot of, we, you know, we don't do this to embarrass people or make you, and a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, I don't want to go. But it's something powerful in responding to the word, to remembering a time when you stepped out, even though you were nervous and your heart were beating, you were scared, but you was like, no, this is what I want. A lot of times we have people pray and quiet and silence, but I feel like in this time and age that people, God is looking for a bold people. Like if you're saying, no, I want to follow Jesus, it's like, yep, yeah, that's me right here. I'm raising my hand. I'm coming down forward. We don't need no more secret, quiet, say within your heart, Christians. We need some bold people who will be like, no, I, that's me. Yep, where I need to go. So if you are here, we always want to open up for you. If you feel God tugging at your heart, and you probably know because your heart is beating fast, I want you to join me right here. Because this is a matter of eternity. If you don't, if you've never remembered asking the Lord into your heart, I want you to meet me right here. And we'll give you time to get here. Yes, sir. Anybody else want to join this man? God bless you, brother. Anyone else want to respond to the gospel? Hallelujah. Yes, God. Anybody else? Come on. This is your day. God, I need you. I need you. Yes, come on, bro. Join these young men. You've never asked God into your life. Come on, ask them. Hey, this is something to be, this is something you don't want to gamble with. You want want to make sure everybody in this room can pinpoint a time in their life when you ask Jesus to come into your life. If you can't pinpoint that and it looks shady and you think you went with your grandma or something, I want you to meet me down here. Come on, thank you. Meet me here. Take, let's, let's, let's get this squared away today. Yes, come on, sis. Let's get this squared away today. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Come on. We're going to be eternally sure today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, God. So for everyone who was down here, what, what you're experiencing is really real. This is God tugging on your heart. This is him saying how much he loves you. And it's really easy to ask him into your life. First, we just want to ask God to forgive you. God, forgive me of all my sins. Come on, I want you to think about it. I want you to talk to God. It's like, God, forgive me. I'm so sorry for everything I've done in the past. And if you're, the, if you're in the audience, you can feel free to, to do this too. Say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me of all my sins. I'm sorry. I repent. I was wrong. Sometimes we just need to tell God, God, I was wrong. I've tried life my way. And now I want to do it your way. That's what we're saying down here. Now I'm just going to ask you a series of questions. I want you guys to look at me. Do you believe that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life? Do you believe that? Do you believe that Jesus died on the cross, that he was buried and he rose again for your sins? Do you believe that? 
Did you believe that the blood he shed washes away for all your sins? I don't care what you did. Do you believe the blood of Jesus washes away all your sins? Do you believe that Jesus is Lord? That he is Lord of all? And you're asking him to be Lord of your life, which means he will control your life. Are you willing to submit to his word? Are you willing to let Jesus control your life from now on? Then the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you are saved. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are saved right now. You don't have to wonder no more. So you're saved from, from hell but you're also saved to live a life set apart for him, right? It's a duality to it. You, from this time on, you can always pinpoint in your, your mind on September 10th, I'll walk down the aisle, I ask Jesus into my life, I believe in him, the Bible says I am saved. You can write it down, you can put it on a journal, and guess what? When you stand before God, and he's gonna roll back this tape, he's gonna be like, oh yes, 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 I remember. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. I remember. Yes. I remember that day. Come on in. I want you in my heart. Oh, yes. I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, God, I just want to pray over these ones, God. I thank you for each one of them. God, do something amazing with their life from this point on. God, they're giving you their hearts, their minds, their souls. They're submitting to you. And anyone else in the audience, if that's you, come on, lift your hands and receive this prayer. God, we are giving you all from this point on. We want to be ready to stand before you, God, whenever our time comes. But in the meantime, we want to live a life full of purpose. Take what you've given us, God. Help us to use it for you. No matter what we do in life, we want to use it for you. We want to abide with you. We want to grow with you. In Jesus' name, amen. So you made a good start. This is a good start. You need to keep coming back. Keep growing. Keep learning. Keep reading. This is a good start, but you want to keep going. Keep going. Amen. Love you guys. Yes.